My name is Sophia Jahan, and I'm super excited to be here to be hosting the 40 series where we're focusing on authenticity and this amazing conversation with Coco and Breezy. And just to give you all a little background, the 40 series was created by Toasted Life. Toasted Life is a lifestyle curation brand that builds community and produces unique events like this one. And this has, you know, this 40 under 40 mindset, and it's really designed to expand growth through inspiration and action. So we're going to make sure that in our conversation, we're giving you actionable insights that you can actually go and put into your own day to day. And again, background on myself. I like to describe myself as an untamed multi hyphenate. What does that mean besides doing the absolute most? I do the absolute most often. <laughs> that means that by day, for the last five years, I lead digital transformation at Microsoft. And by night, I'm an entrepreneur. Earlier, I shared that I have my own fashion women's wear line, and I'm excited about my next woman-led venture. So definitely in Coco Breezy style. And we are going to be focused on helping individuals thrive professionally, emotionally, and socially in Silicon Valley. So we're launching that on June 1st on IG. It's called Tech Now What? So be on the lookout for that with my awesome co-founders, Joy Harper and Rachel Williams. And with that, I got to go into introducing the lovely ladies, Coco and Breezy. So I'm going to share a little bit about their background and we're going to dive into this conversation and how the agenda is going to flow today is we'll have a conversation. Thank you for submitting those questions early on. Drop your questions in the Q&A, drop your feedback in the chat section, and we'll leave some time at the end as well to make sure that we're addressing as most of those questions as possible. So about Coco and Breezy. Coco and Breezy are the founders of Coco and Breezy Eyewear. Love your glasses. <laughs> I love them. And what started out as a DIY project has now evolved into an affordable luxury brand that offers sunglasses and optical collections. The brand has been a favorite among clients and collaborators like Prince, Diddy, Daddy Yankee, Beyonce, just to name a few. They've gathered brand partnerships with Hershey's, Foot Locker, Samsung, and Hulu. And that coupled with notable press mentions has just put them in another realm in the fashion, music, and media landscape. So talk about triple threat. They have hosted and appeared in television shows, entertained crowds for clients like Pandora, BET, Afropunk, which I love. I was in Brooklyn last year, living my best life, Wanderella and Dior. So ladies, with that, your story has inspired so many, but I want to take it back to the beginning for those that don't know about your journey. So let's get behind the sunnies. You don't got to take them off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who's Coco and Breezy and how did you end up in New York City? So I'm Coco and I'm Breezy and we've actually um, been called Coco and Breezy since we were born. A lot of people always ask us like what our government names are and they are Coriana and Brianna but our mom and dad I don't know if they knew that they were creating artists but they literally out the womb started calling us Coco and Breezy. And so we actually grew up in Minnesota so if I have any Minnesota or Midwest people in here hello and we were those outsiders. While we lived in Minnesota, we grew up in the suburbs. We were the only women of color at our school. There were probably about three of us. And so we felt left out. We faced racism. We faced, you know, Breezy and I always were creative. Mm -hmm. And we always, you know, we always messed around and played around with our self-expression. And with that came being bullied because we were never conformist. We were always non-conformist. And so, Fast forward, we started building an internet following on MySpace. And that's when social so media bad. first started, <laughs> yes. But even to kind of where we learned our work habit, even before MySpace, was we, our dad got sick when we were 15. And so that kind of forced us to take on bigger responsibilities. And so we got our first jobs at 15, and we've been financially on our own since we were 15. And then by the time we were 16, we got two jobs. And by the time we were 17, we were working three jobs each. And it, I think that as Coco and I have, as we kind of move around in this world, we realize that we always break rules. So all the jobs, I would say all our little jobs that we had, they were like at the mall, they were fast food places. They always said that they never allowed siblings or family members to work together, but some way, somehow, they always allowed Coco and I to bend the rules. And so all of our jobs that we had together they were together. 
And that actually taught us something. It taught us that you might see a rule in a book and it doesn't mean you have to follow it. It means that that's the outline that you can break and make it your own if you are, you know, if you are confident enough or if you just, if you just ask and you can't be afraid of the no part. And so, um, yeah, and we, we used our style to block ourselves from, from the bullies. And again, now fast forwarding back to the MySpace days, there were people on the internet that understood us. And so we, we created this community of friends of people that were on the East Coast and they were you know, saying, oh, I love your outfit and I love the way you guys dress. And we built up a really big following. We, had, we were about 16 on MySpace with over 50,000 friends. And so the young Coco and Breezy who worked really hard, we said, you know what? We don't want to be internet famous. We want to build a brand. We have customers right here. How can we create this emotional connection that we've built with these people and create a product that they'll love? And so we, were, we graduated high school early because we had extra credits. And during the time where we started signing up for colleges, that's when we internally had that feeling of wanting to move to New York. And so our parents, we, we signed up, we like applied for housing, the whole nines, yeah. but then we got something within our intuition that told us like, make this move. And we went to New York for our 19th birthday and just for two weeks, it was a wrap. Like we were already sucked in. People thought we were somebody. Um, <laughs> people were asking like, who are you guys? Where can I buy those glasses? And 19 year old risk taking Coco and Breezy went back home to Minnesota, quit our little jobs, sold our car and moved to New York with less than a thousand dollars. And at that time for me, I thought I was balling with a thousand dollars. And so <laughs> in our heads, we were like, we saved up a thousand dollars. We're going to move to New York. Like that was a lot of money for us. But I think the bigger part is that we had that level of confidence that, um, that we were so ready to take a risk. And so when we moved to New York, we weren't afraid. I think that right now I would be afraid, but at that time we weren't exposed to a lot at all. Cause again, we grew up in, a, in the suburbs, also like family in the hood. We just weren't exposed to a lot whatsoever. And so for us move, taking that risk to New York, we had nothing to lose at all. Excuse the ringing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the house phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, is house phone still around? I was like, we're, we're house we're phone in the house. <laughs> we have no phone service where we are right now. <laughs> right now. Fully unplugging. I love it. I love it. Um, no, ladies, you dropped so many gems. I mean, one thing that I took away from that is you know, that point you made about you may see a rule in, there may be a rule in the book, but that doesn't mean you have to follow it. Yep. yep. Write that, that down, everybody. Yes. That Thank is a quote. And, you know, that's the kind of betting and willpower you have to put in yourself. So I love seeing that about you guys. And I'm even learning how the phone's going wild still. <laughs> and, and also everyone, so we're in, just really quick, disclosure, yeah. we're in nature right now and we're in the middle of nowhere. So we have to get used to falling in love with like seeing bugs and not having phone service. So excuse us if we see something, if you hear a phone ring. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. So one thing that I learned from just hearing you guys speak recently is, you know, talking, you, you had something traumatic happen early on, right? In your teenage years and having to step up for your family. And I'm certain that helped you create great habits. And I know one thing about entrepreneurship, it is definitely about habits. So I want you to talk about that a little more, you know, what daily self-care habits are you putting into practice to keep your mind fresh what's helping you still keep the entrepreneurship drive going even in this crazy environment that we're in today yeah so one thing i always say is that you can have an amazing idea and to be an entrepreneur and have a good idea are two different things because you have to really build up your emotional intelligence you may go through certain situations that like you're gonna go through some wins and you're gonna go, you're gonna, you're probably gonna go through more loses and loss. like or loss than wins, you know? And so for us, I'm gonna even start when we were younger. We were always goal driven mm -hmm. and we always wrote down what we wanted and looked at the future, but we were okay with going through the ups and the downs. And so younger Coco and Breezy, 
when we first started, we were like, you know, team no sleep and all of that. Everyone, team no sleep is not cute. Mm -mm. And I understand like in order to grow the business, you know, you might get VC funding and you have all these pressures, but guess what? Your company and your employees are not going to be happy with you if you aren't getting any sleep because now your company culture is not going to be the same. And so we had to learn that we needed to take some time out to really get to know ourselves as individuals and to get sleep. I say sleep is key. And something else that I'm a huge believer in is just like positivity as well. So we're very grounded individuals. So even when we do have something that most people would perceive as negative, we actually take that as a positive. Because I think that we as people, we choose how we wanna feel about things. And I think that we all have an idea of a certain goal or milestones that we wanna make, but we also have to be okay with the unknown and be okay with pivots. And so say for instance, something doesn't work. Like today we had a big opportunity to, I'm, I'll let you guys know, but we had an opportunity to DJ on the nicest Instagram page. And we were, I we couldn't were so, sleep. You guys, I couldn't sleep last night because we I was super pumped. stoked. But then, I'm tired right now because I didn't sleep because I was so excited about it. But oh then, gosh. yeah, but then, well, he had to cancel because now the record labels are kind of, um, they're getting tight about music, music being played on IG Live. Mm. And I could have easily been down about it and like looked at it in a negative way, but I chose to go the posit positive route and say, you know what, I'm, well, at least now we're in touch. Now we have his phone number. And right. so I think that we as people, we can choose to just find the positive in every situation because what I've noticed throughout our journey, when things don't work out a certain way, in that moment, you might be bummed out, but which, is okay, on, which is okay, which is to, okay be to be bummed out. But later on in life, you'll see that that happened. It it was okay that that person said no to you. It was actually like, oh my God, I even try to say, I'm grateful that this didn't work out. I'm grateful that this person said no to me. It doesn't mean that they don't like you. I had, which for a long time, cause you know, artists are very sensitive about their shit. And so <laughs> about their ideas for, for a minute, I just swore up and down if someone said no, that they didn't like what we were doing. But in reality, I changed that my mindset and said, you know what, maybe it's not right for them or maybe they're just not our consumer or customer that we target. So it's really setting the mindset. And that's how we, we meditate a lot every day too before we start working as well. And I, I know as soon as I leave my house, well, I can't leave my house now, but when I was going to the office, I know as soon as I walk out that door, I'm gonna be needed from so many different people. So I try to take those times, that time in the morning for ourselves. So we don't wake up and go straight to emails unless there's something very important. And um, it's so important not to just like wake up and, you know, hurry up and jump on everything because the one, way you, oh yeah, the way you start your day is the way that your day will end. So if you start your day anxious, your whole day is going to be that way. I like that. Yeah, energy is so important and I, I try to do the same thing too. I always start off with make sure I hit up a daily motivation with this a scripture, meditation with headspace, making sure that I'm speaking with my fiance or my family or my girlfriends, like positive things that are going to be good for my soul. So mm -hmm. I love what you guys shared just to summarize some of the things that team no sleep, not okay, not cute. Mm -mm. That will, you'll regret it when you get bags and look crazy later in life. So yes, I'm here for that advice emails. I, I think you guys hit the nail on the head. One thing is, you know, there's inbox management and outbox management, right? And if you're going in, like you said, checking emails, you are doing someone else's agenda, not your agenda. Yeah. So that mindset is huge. So I love that you brought that up. Meditation, like I said earlier, and definitely the positive mindset is everything. And I love that part about no, and just thinking through advice you give to entrepreneurs. It's like, what is the worst that can happen? They say no. Yeah, yeah. Reflection on you necessarily just might not be the right time, the right place. And if anything, you learn. So I'm taking notes as well. And, you know, you guys hit on a good point about pivoting. And I want to spend some time to talk about that because, you know, you moved at to New York at the height of right after the financial crisis, right? Yes. And this time right now for so many feels surreal, like it's never happened. And definitely not at this scale it's happened, but we've had these moments in the economy where it's tough to envision what does it look like on the other side? So I'm curious to learn from you guys is thinking through because you've lasted for 
what, a decade now in this game. And you've done so many different pivots from music, from eyewear, from being fashion icons in your own right. How do you manage those pivots, right? How did you think through that and being authentic to yourself, but managing those pivots and taking ownership of those opportunities? I think the, so first in the beginning, we always knew we wanted to get into music and we always knew we wanted to have a company. But in the beginning, you know, someone that has a lot of ideas, it can be very challenging to, to try to do them all at once because, you know, we only have 100%. And yeah, yeah, and so it can be challenging to give 2% here, 3% there. And so we first started off with the eyewear company and, you know, we put so much time into that. And once we were able to build the team out that we were, you know, we're very structurally organized and it was starting to run on its own. We got to spend time on music and Coco and Breezy Eyewear. We always tell people that even though, you know, we have the eyewear company and we have, we're in the music space and we also have a real estate property. We're co-founders of a different company as well. Everything you see is part of the Coco and Breezy lifestyle. And the Coco and Breezy brand was always part of music. We always had every musician wearing our product. And so each time we added something new, we always think about, okay, with the eyewear company, maybe we should start collaborating with musicians. And so we will always have a tie-in in music. So we've actually collaborated with a couple artists where we collaborated on frames and paired it with their album or their single. And it's crazy because with the economy change right now, we're actually making a huge pivot you know, and it can be challenging to think about, you have this master plan that you think you're gonna do and then consumers, they change, customer behavior changes and the economy changes. and the dollar spend changes. And so one big challenging thing I think is so important for anyone that wants to start a company, especially a consumer product company is when you go in and, and especially if you're raising VC money, which we, haven't raised. Which we haven't raised capital, but a lot of people go into that to the consumer product space and they think, okay, I'm going to create a product. I'm going to put this cool branding on it. And I have VC dollars to buy all my customers. But then what happens when the economy goes down and, you know, and people aren't buying products and now they're being more strategic about who they want to support. And so on our end, we've been super bootstrappy and, a lot of VCs didn't understand us, but I think this is our time right now. And then we, we are, it's so funny because when we, we started to raise, but a lot of VCs didn't understand us then, but we're actually doing what, everyone has to do what we've been doing now. You have to get scrappy with like digital marketing. You have to think about that authenticity. You have to think about that trust. Like how, how is the customer gonna trust your brand? What does that brand stand for? And so I think that for other people that may be ahead of their times, what I told Coco, I said, when you are creating a new lane and you're ahead of your time, you can't expect overnight success, but you have to be patient and really stick to your idea and still be very comfortable with pivoting, of course. But also if you have like that big vision, do understand that it will take a little bit more time when you're creating something new. But now we're kind of on track now because everyone kind of has to do what people didn't understand how we were doing it and, and why we were doing it. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting because they didn't recognize it, but you were laying down the foundation, the framework that's gonna help you scale, right? Exactly. That, and that true value, you know, they, they have always that quote, like followers does not mean money, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> that is not a thing, a correlation but true connection with the brand and the people behind it. Like that's what's longstanding. So for me, I noted down the pillars to success, digital marketing, you guys were early in that game, bootstrapping where you can, building trust, that authenticity definitely helped you out and building a team, right? And I know for me and for many entrepreneurs where you probably can do a lot of the roles of a business does not mean you should be doing all the roles of a business. So do you have advice on like, how did you think about building your team out? Well, when we first started, it started off with us doing all the roles, you know, and I think it's very important to know all the roles 
So once you actually do hire certain people on your team, you know how to instruct them or direct them. And, and, you know, it's been, it was really organic, right? Yeah, very organic. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's challenging because when we first started, I was, I'm not going to even, like, I'm going to tell the truth. I was a micromanager to the T. Yes. And it was because I didn't know how to delegate. Everyone, you have to learn how to delegate because you're not going to grow if you try to take it on yourself. But I think because we started off so small and it was just Breezy and I, we have like our sister communication that no one else understood. In language. In our own language. So <laughs> it, was, it was challenging at first and we were quite young and inexperienced, mm -hmm. but it was challenging for me to be like, okay, we have this big project and someone else is gonna do a full creative you know, because I we were so young and all about this like creativity, and then once we actually started building our our business mindset, everything changed. But I think for us, it took us a little bit longer because when we did start our company, we had never had any experience in corporate. I never, no one in our family ever worked in corporate, so I had never walked into a real office before. Um, we never went to college either, so there's just certain things that we learned on our own through trial and error, and through making mistakes because we're the queens of problem solving. I love a good solving a problem. And something that I'm really big on as well is when we are delegating our team. And if our team member, someone that works with us, if they do something wrong, I actually question my delegation. And I think a lot of leaders, they use their sense of power to say, why didn't you do this wrong? Or why did you do it this way? But you have to actually point the finger at yourself and say, how did I, what type of directions did I give them? Because they actually, when you really get down to it, they follow your directions. And so I think that, you can't put, you have to make your team members be very happy to work with you mm -hmm. as opposed to always blaming them. Because as leaders, we have to also keep practicing and perfect our delegation so that we are getting the results and the visions that we actually want. Yeah, um, and you're hitting some good points here on leadership style. And I agree definitely on the onset, especially at the onset of knowing pretty much all parts of the business, because then it, you do truly have the ability to empathize, right, on what that person is going to be able to deliver. And another good thing I learned along the way is that you have to celebrate the little wins, right? Yeah. Like, always excited about the end journey, the end milestone, but that's not what keeps people, to your point, energetic, excited in the morning, right? Uh, so anxiety and like feeling like the world is crumbling. Yes. So I'm with you guys all the way on that. And, you know, you talked a bit about what it was like when you were in those VC rooms and you're working on some cool projects now. So you you definitely have taken the time to understand what your worth is, what your value is. How can you help the people on the phone that are entrepreneurs and budding entrepreneurs? How do you understand your true value and your true worth? And people are thinking about pricing and not overselling but not being undersold when someone comes to you with an opportunity how does that work in in your mindset Go ahead, well i'll talk about some of our our partnerships that we've had with coco and breezy eyewear mm -hmm. i'm the queen of negotiating <laughs> i'm the person that will beat around the bush and so we, literally we'll be in meetings kicking each other if we're on a conference call we're we're, we're like, like snatch <laughs> Have the phone on mute because Bree's like, no, ask them for more. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> but I think that whatever comes your way, if it's like a partnership or like a contract or just knowing your value and your worth, yeah. You just have to, it's like a level of confidence that um you have to have as well. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you can't expect for the other party to, to believe in you. you. And you just have to test it out. I can't even say outside of even business, but even when we first got our first DJ gig, our first ever DJ gig, I asked a friend, how much do DJs usually charge for this amount? He told me a price and I times it by four. Cause I said, and the, the client said yes. And so you just have to test things out. Right. And yeah, and if someone says no, it's, it's okay. You can always go down, but I always times it by four, but in, in reality, the number would be a lot smaller and you're actually okay with that other number. But you really just have to have the confidence. You also have to ha show the work. Yeah. You have to, because some people, I can say some people kind of over, they oversell, but they don't have the things to prove it either. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? And I, th yeah. I think you also have to deliver. 
And so yeah. deliver plus more. We always add a treat. Deliver plus more. I like that. Yeah. And it's and when it comes to that, I think outside of you know knowing your worth with like monetary wise, building relationships can't be transactional. Because all of our long-term partnerships that actually like help our company grow, um, they are relationships that we built that weren't transactional at all. They were maybe, you know, just like got in touch and maybe three years later, they reached out to us. So I think that the way that people kind of move now, it's very important to build those genuine relationships. And of course, you want to build that authenticity with like your customers, but now it's starting to be that same it's valuable in business now to really work with people that are authentic and making sure that you're delivering that same type of vibe as well. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And even thinking back through my own journey and my, and what I've been able to develop, it has been because I've genuinely shared dreams that have been important to me with people. And you never know when you put your dreams into the atmosphere, who's going to be able to help you out or put you on. Yeah, it's so people, true. Right? And like people, people connect with that journey, that energy, that vibe. And to your point, like, especially if you have the work ethic to match with it, like the sky is the limit. So I love you sharing that tidbit. And definitely for us as pe people of color, women of color, that delivering plus more, unfortunately is like table stakes, right? <laughs> yeah, we've, oh my gosh, we've experienced some very weird interactions, especially when we were walking, when we had our little run of um, speaking to VCs. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting because we even met with a few VCs that they pride themselves in investing in people of color, especially black women. And because they understand why those companies may not have met certain milestones because of, again, the things that we as Black people go through and the experiences. And the systemic issues. And the systemic issues. But they they preach that. But when you're walking into these rooms, it's something completely different. And I think that we've been that, outside broke, of, that experience broke my heart. <laughs> in, like a, in a way that it was just like, you know, you have companies and people that say, like, we're all about women or we're yeah. all about this. And then you actually meet with them. And I think they're just saying it for the press. And they're not living up to their words, you know, but it's okay because again, keep moving. You know, you, like, if this person doesn't understand it, keep going. Cause you actually don't want someone on your team who doesn't understand your vision. Cause yeah. that will hold you back. And right. so another mindset I had to tell myself, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. We used to walk out of those rooms crying, like going home and just being so like sad. Like why? How come they're not like understanding us? But I'm like, you know what? During this time, I realized that if those people would have understood us, we wouldn't be in the position we are today because they would have no idea on our actual vision because we're, we're nonconformists. You know, we're creating a new path for everybody. And, so, and we're very confident in that. And so we want people on the team that actually understand like if they really want to be a part of this big thing that we're creating because we're creating a huge situation company. i'm so yeah. excited i'm so I'm super pumped <laughs> no i love that and i, I see my, my brother quentin in here hey quentin yes quentin is the brand man in that part you mentioned about being a non-conformist that's true brand identity right and that has been a part of the Coco and Breezy brand from day one. And you see it in the marketing. You see it in your storytelling. We see it in how you engage with your mom. We see it with how you tell your story of being bullied and where it brought you today. We, should, we see it in how you share what it was like to walk through those streets in New York City early on, right? And like that energy that brought you guys to life. So I love that nonconformist mindset. And that's truly the differentiator. And I see this, um, I'm just looking at some of these chats, authenticity, right? Nonconformist rules. So the crowd is saying all the cheers, all the snaps for that. And you know what it's making me think about, particularly on the VC front, you brought up a good point on, again, your team and your scale and thinking through funding, right? People get so excited about like getting that million dollar investment, that $2 million investment. You know, that comes with strings. <laughs> And the last thing you want is strings for someone that's really not there for you. And like yeah. you said, 
here for the marketing and lip service. So God has everything happen for a reason. And I already hear that y'all are working on something masterful. And how much more amazing is that, that you bootstrap it yourself and you didn't have to even depend on VC funding. So I know y'all are trickling this out. Y'all got my temperature rise and I think I need to drink or something. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm drinking something for this little release. So like, I think it's what? It's five o'clock on the West Coast. It's eight o'clock in New York. I'm gonna do the quick little music intro in a loop. Dancing right now. Go breezy. Ready for the beat drop. Hey. We have dance breaks at the office, we have every dance day. breaks at home, we have dance breaks every day. And what I'm gonna announce about this collaboration, we have this video of um, when we when we got the contract back and I was dancing my heart out in the office. <laughs> love it, I love it. You need a good day man dance break and definitely for good music. I'm in the room, I'm talking about tearing it up. Like, like you know sometimes when you dance, don't even think about doing a dance move. Sometimes you just need to let your body just move and it like, just lets out so much like, just I don't know, you just feel good. <laughs> it, really, it does release stress. It's a grounding tool for us. It is. I love it. I love it. I love that dance break you guys had on Instagram the other day. I was like, yes, we got to oh, yes. <laughs> And I am rocking a Sophia Jahan original jumpsuit. So I had to show a little test of the movement because I know people are like, can you actually move in your pieces? I'm like, yes. I, I love it. Thank you. Might have to send y'all a jumpsuit or something too. So y'all can yes. We love a jumpsuit. <laughs> so, you know, talking about things that re-energize and recharge you, I love the post that you guys had up um, recently about creativity. And you reached out to your audience to try to figure out, you know, so many people are in a creative rut right now. Mm -hmm. or they're just like, I don't know how to recharge. I don't know how to find what's next like they're so overwhelmed with the stress that a lot of people are feeling in so many different ways so take us behind the scenes like what encouraged you to even put that post out and you guys took the time to respond to I'm sure hundreds of comments what did you learn you know I think that one we love talking to our people and you know it's very interesting so Coco and Breezy the way we started we're tapping back into the way we, we started. The way we started was, it was very much talking to our customers and talking to our people. And as we grew, we start, I wouldn't say we started to get more corporate, but we started to like take on those more like D to C quirky corporate sort of ways. And then we're like, hold on, we're kind of missing something. And our creativity started to go away. And we said, you know what, let's tap back into what Coco and Breezy used to do but we, we have to speak to the people. And mm -hmm. so um, we had, we spoke to the people and it's, it's beautiful because we, even when we're developing product, we, we ask the people, what do you want? Do you want, what, what sort of frames do you want? What shape, what colors? And we actually take that data and we, we log it and we use that in our product development. And I think it's so important to listen to the people because we're not designing for ourselves, we're creating for others and they love to feel like they're a part of it. And I think it's interesting because we, to be creative and to think about that new idea, it can be challenging and don't beat yourself up for it. Mm -mm. Like if you can't think of something, it's okay. It might take you two weeks or it might take you a month or it might take you a couple of years, but you can't force it out because right now we're, we are in stressful times. And even when we first went on lockdown in New York, the first two weeks, we didn't work. We, we didn't, didn't do anything. I didn't know what to what do. To do. <laughs> I had no idea what to do. I couldn't create, I couldn't open an email. I couldn't do anything because my body was so used to being on the move and on the go. Prior to that, we were traveling like three times a week and we were always moving. So I knew, I knew how to work in that. And it, like having this like crazy energy and momentum and just being at home, I lost my creativity and I lost like motivation. I had to rebuild it up in this new space. And I think the bigger part is while we are on lockdown or while we're quarantining, 
It's not a productivity contest. Like you see someone else saying, this is the time right now to be productive. Being productive doesn't mean building a company right now. Being productive means you might want to build a company or you might want to build yourself. Mm -hmm. And you might want to take more time out for yourself. So even Breezy and I, our team knows right now, we don't start working until 11 o'clock because on the calendar, it says from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's Coco and Breezy's time. And that's our time that we do yoga, meditation, and we make breakfast. And it's, it feels so good to do it's that my all. Favorite time of it's the my day. favorite time of the day because I don't feel like I have to run somewhere, you know, or I don't, I'm in my mind, my mind's not going. And I think it's so healthy for me to do that because for the past 15 years, we, Been on the grind. we were on the grind, on the hustle, and we missed out on a lot of self-care. Yeah, you know, you're, you're hitting a good point. And what I find is, I love that you guys are actually sticking to it, right? I, first of all, I just shout it out. Like my brother's over here saying facts, self-care is critical right now. And you know, that social media era that we're living in, it feels like I have to be doing exactly what I see, mm -hmm. right? It's a thin line between being inspired and then automatically going back and being hard on yourself. Yep. You, know you are. And people struggle on how to distinguish the two and separate the two. And mm -hmm. I love that, you know, what you said about the focus, it could, yes, I heard some good news recently. If you're already on track to be building your brand and launching it, great. But you can also spend this time to recalibrate and just focus on building yourself and taking sure. some time, quality time. Like these things, I feel like everything in life happens for a reason. Yeah. Yep. We're in this moment right now. And the thing you'd be remiss about is not the productivity. You'd be remiss if you didn't take some time to do true self-care and true self-reflection on what makes Coco and Breezy light on fire, right? Yes. Like what energizes your soul? What energizes Sophia's soul? What's good for the people that I love and care about? And how can I bring my best self to those situations, right? Like that's the kind of energy I see. And that's what I see when I see you guys cooking. And like I said, engaging with your mom and like her giving her feedback on your story and that those relationships like that's what really matters and that's what really needs true energy and support right now yeah, so okay. I just have to like kudos you guys for that because you're setting a good example on that component of it and it's really important for people like you that so many people look up to are show are leading by example and sharing that side as well Totally. You know, what's really important for us too, since we are talking about authenticity, yeah. it's so important for people, because I think social media builds out what a person is, it builds out a character. And it's so important for us to show like the, like the full behind the scenes of what we're doing and even how we've been bringing on our mom on our IGTV and on live. And it's, it's beautiful to have her on there because our mom is so real and she will, she's like talking about our old, stories and she's talking about her experience how she still has to work right now during COVID you know and I think it's important for people to see that because they see one thing on the internet and they right. might think that we live these lives that are so different and it's all step by step you know and so now when people see that side it'll encourage them more to be like you know what I can do I can start a business I know mm -hmm. that it's going to take steps and these people feel like real people to me yes yeah, I, I mean, one, heart goes out to your mom, right? And my mom is also someone that has been working the entire time. My mom's a social worker in Florida, so she's an essential care worker. And, you know, it's like I said, everybody is dealing with these things in different ways. But the thing that I like that you guys are highlighting as well is, one, being supportive, but two, to the key point you put, you, put, you just mentioned, is that human connection. Yeah. And especially for those of us that go corporate, <laughs> I think it, it's easy to get lost in like the machine, right? And like just thinking route, like I need to produce X by Y, and then this will compute to X, Y, Z, and it'll be great. And people will love you forever. It's like, no, people, people are people. Yeah. People are humans at the end of the day. And it's a human connection that is at the core and at the center even when you're thinking about these businesses. And the thing that I love that you're sharing more and more about your story is there is no overnight success. No. Not for us. No. It's not, no. A thing. it's not a thing. It's grit. It's hard work. It's these patterns that you've been putting in place little by little. So 
I have to learn more about what y'all have been working on in this announcement and this deal. Are y'all gonna share some of the tea? Yeah, we'll share. We'll share, share the tea with them. Yeah, I'll share the tea. So y'all, we have not announced this. This is exclusive. So if any of you work in corporate, don't tell your friends yet. This is only for y'all. <laughs> okay. But, okay. Um, if you do, it's fine. It's just, it's <laughs> You can, so people can start talking. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so on Breezy Eyewear, we are launching a preteen eyewear collection. And we are partnering up with a company that has sold over 25 million glasses. And they make affordable glasses. And so we're partnering up with Zenny to create their first, it's their first time doing a collaboration from scratch and doing a collaboration in the preteen line so it's in collaborating with another eyewear company as yeah well. so this is actually really major in the eyewear space because one a lot of eyewear companies don't collaborate with each other i think people always think that there's not enough market share to collaborate you always see a, a, a collaboration with an eyewear company in a fashion brand but you don't see a lot of eyewear company and eyewear company and especially right. because zinni is because most of our eyewear we're in almost 600 optical retailers and that's the traditional space. And so in the traditional space, they are very afraid of the Warby Parkers and the Zinnies. They're afraid of the people that are selling online. And so here we are as Coco and Breezy, we're sold in the traditional space and now we're about to launch on, and, and like we're launching with a company that the traditional space is afraid of. But again, in the eyewear industry, we're not conformist and we're gonna do this. And so I am ecstatic because I think we're gonna have Mark my words, everyone. We're going to have the number one preteen eyewear company in 2020 is about to end in how many months? I'm going to say <laughs> we're launching in September or in August, September ish. But I think it's going to be like the, the top best. The cool part about this is that we, eyewear brand we also we manifested this because yeah, we, we, we were going through a lot of our old videos and we yeah. were talking about 2020, 10 years ago. Yeah. We were talking about certain goals and we're finally. Again, it's not overnight. That was 10 years ago that we were speaking it and feeling it. And right. now we're seeing some of those results. But the thing is, we also, like, I would say five years ago, we were like, we want to collaborate with either Zenny or Warby. Yeah, we, we talked, we said that. And it's happening. And I, I know for a fact that it's bigger than this kids' preteen eyewear. It's bigger than just the eyewear. But we're, we're also creating a platform for kids that are going through, like, it's all about, like, emotional intelligence it's all about self-care so all the glasses are um, this is really exclusive we haven't given the details yeah, but it. all the glasses are affirmations that's a little sneak peek but it's the all, names. About, all the okay. names are affirmations and so it's all like positive energy and it's just, everything we wanted when we were their ages so from the the marketing messaging to the kids that we use in the campaign it's it's pretty much we'll be able to if i was a kid i'll find these to see someone who looks like me and we're making we're like we're, we have 100% creative control with, with all that. So, so we're, we're excited. so excited, y'all. So excited for you guys. Look, we do a virtual cheers and toast to yeah, that. I also have my wine, but I cheers know. to <laughs> No, that is so, so dope. Thank you. It's going to be major. I'm so. It's going to be major. And honestly, I mean, when you talk about, again, you're not just going on autopilot, right? Like you've had this in your spirit for a long time but you're so smart in how you guys are co-branding, co-partnering with someone in this space and hitting an untapped market. And you bring so much to the table in this partnership. I know y'all, I know you brought your negotiation game as well. Lose this. <laughs> Manifestation piece that you mentioned is so, so important. Like, yeah. I mean, like putting that atmosphere into the energy is big. Yep. And, you know, it even reminds me of my own story. Like this is, this is a photo of my mom back here and her high-waisted trousers from 1970 and mom, Joe Miller's in from straight from Jamaica to JFK. Right. And her just desire and dreams for my brother and I definitely played a role into who I be, am today and also in launching this line, right? These jumpsuits, these vibrant colors and pieces. It is, when we talked about authenticity and being true to yourself, I've always been colorful and vibrant. And what is making me, you guys are putting a little seed in my sphere right now because I'm remembering when I was just focusing on doing styling 
that um, a friend of mine came up to me. She was working for Fenty Beauty. We we're talking about Rihanna. And she's like, hey, Sophia, like, I just don't see many people, many women of color specifically thriving in this space. Who is it besides Rihanna right now? That's like really out there with brands and iterations and watch you guys pivot. And when you said, Coco Breezy said, this is our time. That is a word. This is our time for people of color right now, especially for those of us that have put in that hard work and that ethic. This is your time to come and shine and deliver. I promise you the market is ready. And like the underdog story, like you cannot beat the underdog story. And you guys have it and you have the work ethic to go with it. So I'm super excited. I'm definitely going to be buying some pieces for my nieces and nephews. Yeah. I'm going to fit my eyes. I'm like, can we maybe drift into the older range at some point? <laughs> but no, this, this is huge, 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 huge. And, you know, you that part about when you were that age and seeing someone representative, right? Like that representation mattered. Yes. That exposure and empowerment matters so much. And you already are doing that right now. And now you're going to inspire the next generation to see themselves not only like on the cover, but the woman that built it and built this partnership, girl. Oh my gosh. You're making me cry. cry. <laughs> oh, y'all giving me shivers over here. Seriously. About to cry. <laughs> it's, I mean, I am a true believer in giving people their roses and their good due while they're here and while they're alive. And what you guys are doing seriously is phenomenal. I am your advocate and fan. I'm rooting for you. You said at the beginning, right? And thinking about the brand sponsorships that so often when we're in the same space, we think we both can't win together. Yeah. yeah. That crab mentality hurts our community so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's more than enough for all of us to eat and do well. Yeah. So, I mean, hands down. So what you're doing right now, I hope, I know will serve as a blueprint. I love that you put that affirmation to the year, into the energy, into the year, into the, to the space right now, right? You said it's going to be number one. Say it again. What is it going to be, Coco and Breezy? Have the number one kids I wear brand in 2020. 2020. Heard it here, May 21st. Okay. Yep. Clean. So look, that's the kind of energy you have to put in there. And I think this is a good tip. And I'm sure you can probably expound on this. People are so like, we let fear overcome us and putting those kind of things out there, those kind of affirmations out there. Cause like, I don't know, I'm gonna hit those goals. I don't know what the market's going to say or what I received. Right. That used to be me. That was never me though. <laughs> I told Coco, because it was never me. I told Coco, I'm like, I'm I know I'm over here manifesting some stuff, but if there's two of us manifesting the same things, it can yeah. come back to So I'm like, I know what I want. <laughs> but I don't know what you want, girl. Like, I'm gonna need you to, you know, like I think that sometimes we as people, especially I'm not sure how everyone else grew up, but the way that we grew up, we came from very super humble beginnings. And so we we as people, we may have um, a certain goal and our goal actually might be kind of small because we just weren't exposed to a lot and yeah. so now that we've experienced more we kind of have these traumas that we traumas and like these challenges because now that we've exposed we've been exposed to more we know what the bigger goal is but there's still something that's inside holding us of us inside. that's holding us back that's like am I am I actually going to really be able to, to go there like am I actually going to be able to take the steps to get to that goal and we just have to remind ourselves that, yeah, we can. If we just put it out there and like work towards it, it's po at least it's possible. Yes, it, at that part, it is possible, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys have that, you have the opportunity to build with each other. So look, this has been great. I said that I was going to give the audience an opportunity to ask questions. So please drop your questions in the q and mm -hmm. I have a few. I'm going to try to narrow down to some of the top ones that I'm seeing and I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off with this first one because it is the elephant in the room during this time right what has been the greatest lesson you've learned during this pandemic oh I would say like during this pandemic the greatest lesson I've learned honestly is being okay with doing nothing because again we've been on the go for 15 years, always working. And I 
whenever I wanted to like during the pandemic, when I wanted to rest and do nothing, I had a, a, a guilty feeling internally. And so once I kind of realized that and I was aware that I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to just rest. And like, if I need to sleep in, sleep in, because at the end of the day, the world, we're all going through the same thing. And I, honestly, I, that is what made me feel more comfortable. That It's not a race. We're all at home right now. We're all trying to figure this crazy shit out. And so I had to keep reminding myself that. And now, like the other day, Coco and I woke up at 7 a.m., our normal schedule, but then we were both still tired. And so we took a nap and woke up at 10. Usually the old me, like a couple of weeks ago, would have felt guilty about that. The new me was like, girl, I slept good. Did you sleep good? Yeah, I'm like, I slept good too. Girl, I'm like a whole new person. It's, <laughs> it's like just being okay with, with that stuff. Like, right. take care of your body. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'm going to just keep them rapid fire. So we get through as many as possible and that recharge and refresh. Definitely do it for yourself. So we have a next, another question. Can you share a simple strategy you use to maintain the authenticity of your brand when paid collaborations may try to alter it? Ooh. Okay. So whenever we take on a partnership, we always make sure that we can bring in our, our authenticity first. We don't ever, even if there's money involved, if it doesn't fit our brand DNA, we say no. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenging thing is to say no to money. <laughs> but if you know deep down in your heart that it doesn't fit, don't you, do it. you can't do it. So for us, we, you know, we collaborate with Twizzlers and Jolly Rancher and we had the license to do eyewear, but we created a sophisticated Coco and Breezy brand and use the right. colors, or sorry, Coco and Breezy frame, but we use the colors and the shapes to still make it us. So it wasn't Kitty and, when people heard about the collaboration, they thought it was gonna be Kitty and Candy, but no, it was still very Coco and Breezy. So it's, it just, it's important for us, we make sure that before we complete a contract or say yes to something that we will, we're able to make sure the Coco and Breezy DNA is there. Yeah, I love that. And um, it, you're right. It is not easy to say no to money. <laughs> but when your brand starts looking all over the place, then, you know, it wasn't really worth it. So and also, don't get me wrong. In the beginning, we said yes to everything because we needed the, <laughs> needed the money. Yeah. <laughs> and so then when we got to a point to make certain sacrifices. We had to say no because the brand was starting to actually grow. Yes. Well, that's actually a great lead into this next question about the brand growing. So you know, you're incredible DJs, right? And you talked about everything fitting under your lifestyle umbrella, but what was the deciding factor behind diversifying your brand? Like what was the trigger point when you said, okay, this is the next moment to go into X or go into Y? It actually it was happened really the universe. Or, it happened organically. Organically. If I, I feel like our story sounds, when I think about it, I'm like, it sounds so unreal, but the way that we, we always wanted to be DJs, dreamed about it since we were kids. But the, the way that we actually like started DJing was one day we woke up and we had an email. Mind you, there we had never touched any turntables. We never posted anything about wanting to be DJs. It was like an eternal goal of ours since we were kids. And we always like were into music. And we we're always into music. But someone emailed us like, hey, can I book Coco and Breezy to DJ? And, and so we're like, is this a sign? I'm like, again, you y'all, signs come your way. Take them. Wow. That was a sign. And, and so we called our homegirl. Her name is Martina McFly, an amazing DJ from Atlanta. We said, Martina, because we, we were telling Martina for years that we wanted to start DJing, but you know how you tell people you want to do something? And yeah. it, you might be a little afraid because you're like, I don't know like what goes into this. We called her. We were like, hey, someone wants to book us. Can you teach us how to play? She taught us in this one day. And the next day is when we had our first gig. And then after that, it's just been nonstop. It's been history. It's that, been like, wow. An email, look at, putting things in the atmosphere for y'all. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I love, I love that story and being open for opportunities when it happens. Exactly. Yes. So, you know, we're running up on time here and I love the energy that you guys have. I know the audience will love to learn more a little more insight into your creative process. Like, what does that look like for you guys? You talked about self-care and wellness, but the creative side of developing, what does that look like for both of you? Well, what it looks like for me is the atmosphere has to be right. 
I put my incense on. It has to be like certain type of music. And even, Coco knows. Like when, even when you walk into our office, we have a certain scent and there's a warm feeling in like, our office because the way Coco and Breezy I were started is we started in our living room. And so we were so used to an environment like that. And so our office kind of has like, like it kind of has a homey, like the feel because of the scent and, and the interior. Our, our office is like sage, incense, like yeah. you just feel like the whole, the whole floor smells good because of our office. <laughs> yeah. But I think the creative process is really like, and I had creator's block for like the first month of quarantine. I was not designing a pair of glasses. And then one day I had to just kind of force myself into it. And I realized I had to switch up my environment and I switched it up. There are certain songs that made me feel good. There are certain smells that made me feel good. It's all about the five senses. Yeah. I just did it. And um, I love like, there's no right or, right or wrong way to come up with ideas. And so it's so interesting. So my, our next collection that we're working on, I got inspired by lamp shapes. Hmm. Yeah, like I, it's so interesting. Like you can really pull inspiration from anything and everything and just being open to feedback, being open to opening your mind to see, I can look at like, like if I, this cup, I can look at, I can design a pair of glasses. I can like use the, the pattern off of this. You know what I mean? So like, I really opened my mind up to see so many different things that I can, so many different items that I can be inspired by. Yeah, I love that. I mean, the cup is a great example, right? Cause like even the texture on it and yeah. the gradient of the color, I'm sure I, it'd be a fly pair of Coco and Breezy I wear. <laughs> And I know you got to share at least one of the songs that's your go-to. You said, oh you know, <laughs> oh, we've been playing, we've been listening to a lot of Cashmere Cat and their yeah. guilty pleasure is we love Jacquees. We're like number one Jacquees fans. Don't make me oh. this out, but we're like, we're part, we're team Jacquees. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows, but <laughs> I'm not, I'm for real too. <laughs> Put it out there, right? Yeah. With the energy out <laughs> and then I want to know the scent oh so I love not champa that's my favorite incense and then we have so many candles as well we're, we're more of like the dark kind of charcoal -y, smoky um candle type of flavors okay okay yeah. I love it I love it I mean this is like this is true brand identity and authenticity and Coco and Breezy you guys have been a pleasure to talk to today and the 40 series major thank you to you too for taking the time out to share more about your story major thank you to Toasted Life for developing this series and for everybody that took time out to invest in themselves to relax get to know more about both of us my name is Sophia Jahan again we got Coco and Breezy with a fire launch coming out in a new space. I'm so excited to see two Black women leading. And like I said, I have some exciting stuff coming out June 1st, Tech Now What? And I am just, I got chills for what's going on for 2020. 2020 is not over. Not for no. us. <laughs> make it. It's not, we gonna make it all right. All yeah. right, ladies. Beijos. Thanks everybody. Have a great night. Bye, and everyone. Live beautifully. Bye.